Oh, Mortal Kombat. The very reason that we have an ESRB rating system for video games today. Why are you on your 12th installment calling yourself one when there's technically already a Mortal Kombat 1? Don't you know what you're doing to my Google searches? My YouTube searches? I'm rambling. Welcome back, my fellow casual gamers. I have a simple question for you bloodthirsty combatants out there. Do you like fatalities? Because I sure do. I don't have a problem. Nope. But there's nothing quite like fighting for your life in an intense battle and beating your opponent within an inch of their life before stylishly finishing them off in a brutal fashion. Since the very first Mortal Kombat, fatalities have been a staple in the franchise, showcasing the various ways that our favorite fighters of the series dispatch their enemies with style. With Mortal Kombat 1 on the way, and with the interesting fatalities that they've shown so far, I thought I'd go through and rank each fatality. This includes the cameo fighters, so this should be pretty interesting. At number 7, we've got Kano. Kano is one of the cameo fighters in this game. For those of you who don't know what a cameo fighter is in this new installment, let me tell you about it. They're a group of additional fighters that can aid you in combat. You can perform combos and depending on the kind of combos you do, your cameo fighter can join in on the beatdown to help you gain the advantage in the fight. So we have the classic skin of Kano in this game, and accompanying him with his classic fit is his classic fatality. <laughs> The dude literally rips the heart out of his opponent. It's a very brutal but straight to the point tactic that he loves to do, even in the movies. The reason why it's so high up on the list though, isn't because it's necessarily bad. And to be completely honest, it's quite an impressive feat of strength to be able to, you know, rip someone's heart out like that because you gotta puncture the chest, go through the cavity, get a solid grip on the organ. It's, it's just a whole mess when you really get down to it. But by the standards of Mortal Kombat and how outrageous the fatalities can be, this one is pretty tame. I mean, even some of the lame ones like Quan Chi's neck stretch fatality are still more creative, you know? Jeez, that Quan Chi fatality is so nonsensical though. What were they thinking? But yeah, a simple heart grab, considering this is the Mortal Kombat universe, definitely places this one as the kickoff fatality of this list. Number 6, Sonya Blade. Sonya is another cameo fighter of this game. Rocking her classic Mortal Kombat 1 attire, she performs her signature kiss of death that ignites her enemies and sets them ablaze. What a way to go. I mean, damn. Yeah, Sonya has always had some pretty interesting fatalities. Some of them involve her spectacular leg strength. Even in the first Mortal Kombat movie, she uses her legs to decommission her rival Kano without a second thought. And I mean, what a way to go, right? Uh, I mean, damn. Some of her fatalities also involve some fancy gadgets that she utilizes in the later games, like Mortal Kombat X and 11. But the Kiss of Death has been one of her go-tos for quite some time. I think they're in every Mortal Kombat game that she's been in so far. I don't think I remember it being in the reboot game or an MK11 for that matter, but feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. She even sort of does it in that one Mortal Kombat movie, you know the one. Point is, Sonya's kiss is not only hot, like literally, but also extremely deadly. Would hate to be on the receiving end of that, but I mean, what a way to go, right? I, I mean, damn! Number 5, Jackson Briggs. On to the next cameo fighter on the list, Special Agent Jackson Briggs, or Jax for short. The version of Jax that makes it into this game is the one from Mortal Kombat 2, the sequel to the original Mortal Kombat. Combat. For the love of God, another realm, please don't pull a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and follow up to the sequel of this game by calling it Mortal Kombat 2. Feels like they're trying to alter history in the real world, am I right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Anyway, Jax is back and is ready to stomp some fools. Like seriously. It's his classic fatality of growing into a massive size of himself and stomping on his enemy. This is such a ridiculous and outrageous fatality, and it makes absolutely no sense as to why it happens. And I love every bit of it. This is what Mortal Kombat fatalities are supposed to be about. Some can absolutely wow you with their style of execution. Others have you sit back in your chair and literally say, what the f We've seen something similar in the past with Ermac, funny enough. The person who actually causes Jax to have metal arms in this timeline uses his magic to shrink his enemies and stomp on them before trying to get their little bloody splat stain off of his boot. Damn. It's really nice that we're seeing an updated version of this classic fatality and having its outrageousness enhanced for this generation of consoles and PCs. It only gets me more excited to see what else these cameo fighters will bring to the table in regards to classic fatalities. Number 4. Kenshi. It's time to start diving into the fighters that we know are playable so far. Kenshi, the blind swordsman. I'm still on the train of getting Keanu Reeves to play this guy in the live action adaptation. I mean, how could I not be? The dude is absolutely breathtaking. You're 
breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Kenshi finally makes his way back into the series after his very noticeable absence in Mortal Kombat 11. This will be the second time that he actually plays a part in the story. He didn't really play a part in the Mortal Kombat reboot, being a DLC character and all. Mortal Kombat X saw the blind swordsman as one of the parents of the newer generation of fighters. He seemed very wise and quirky in MKX, and I really enjoyed seeing his character that way. But now, in Mortal Kombat 1, there seems to be a very noticeable change in the swordsman's demeanor. He's very angry and violent, to the point where Su Chin, his love interest, left him. So with this new aggressive attitude, there's bound to be an even more aggressive fatality, right? Guys, you don't even know. Check it out for yourself. Goodness gracious. I love how this fatality, like the previous fatalities he's done, showcases Kenshi's telekinesis abilities. Just that first motion of rendering his victim helpless looks remarkably uncomfortable. Then the man uses his blade to be an intestine blender before splitting them in half. Something is wrong when the splitting in half part is the least body tensing moment. The only thing I'm more interested in seeing other than how the story will play out this time around for Kenshi is getting to see what his second fatality will be when we eventually get our hands on the game. Number three, so Zero. We're down to the final three combatants, and this time, we'll be talking about the lifelong rival to everybody's favorite Hellspawn Scorpion, Sub-Zero. This Cryomancer has one interesting character arc through the series. Despite how dated the game is, and how cheesy the acting appears, I really enjoy the story that Sub-Zero Mythologies gives, because it does delve deep into some important lore from the original games that help us see the kind of person Bihan is. That's who this Sub-Zero is this time around, by the way. It looks like instead of Hanzo dying at the hands of the Cryomancer, Netherrealm changed their fates and made them brothers. I don't think this would necessarily stop them from being rivals, but that original driving factor for them to want to kill each other that was there in the original game and the reboot is probably gone. It does beg the question of what happens with Kwai Liang now, but I'm sure we'll get an explanation down the line. Anyway, you guys didn't come here for a history lesson. You came here to see some fatalities, and believe me when I tell you that Sub-Zero's, on top of it being brutal, also has style. Sub-Zero. Wow. So yeah, right off the bat, conjures up some kind of ice-bladed boomerang, slicing his enemy in half, which we all know is just oh so pleasant. Then the man kicks them, turning them around to have them get a glimpse at the weapon that will be decommissioning them for good. They make it look so painful too, like gosh. Brain freezes are already pretty killer, but that's a little too cold for me. The slide and disconnect from the other half of their body is the chili cherry on top. Beyond, you are one ice-cold motherfucker. Number two, Kitana. The true princess of Edenia, Kitana makes her appearance in this brand new game, ready to bring order to her realm, I think. Still don't know too much about how things will play out with her in this game. Not sure if Sindel is still alive this time, but if it's going to follow the original lore to some extent, I expect her not to be. And I believe this time around, they're trying to make Melina and Kitana actual sisters, sort of like how they're doing with Sub-Zero and Scorpion. As we see in the gameplay trailer, Melina looks like she was eventually experimented on, and that's what causes her transformation into the monstrous woman we see today. As for Katana, she looks like she's still in control of her realm for now. No signs of Shao Kahn or any major threats besides Shang Tsung. And she still is compassionate about certain people as ever based upon certain intro interactions she has with some of the fighters. But if we put her elegance and beauty to the side for just a moment, we get a killer of a princess, ready to have people meet their end courtesy of her fan blades. <laughs> Kitana wins. Flawless victory. Kitana's fatality shows her controlling her blades, trapping her enemy in some kind of void between the fans before they close in on the poor soul. I think the best thing about this fatality is just how effortlessly Kitana seems to pull it off. It's nothing too over the top either, not something that I had to watch in multiple takes like I did with Sub-Zero's. I guess it just shows that sometimes less is more, and despite the princess's quick and effortless fatality here, it still has tons of style. Number 1, Fire God Liu Kang. This guy had to have the top spot, right? What is there to say about Liu Kang? 
something that hasn't already been said. He's Earthrealm's champion. He's always trying to do the right thing. I mean, this guy was the only person in the original Mortal Kombat one that didn't have an actual fatal fatality. It wouldn't be until the second game that we would actually see him take a bite out of his enemies. And the third game where he would drop a an arcade cabinet on his enemies. Like, how? But yeah, speaking of remarkable feats such as that, Liu's now transcended to godhood, becoming Earthrealm's defender once more, and the keeper of time itself being Fire God Liu Kang. After a vicious battle with Kronika and Shang Tsung on separate occasions, he's taken it upon himself to make sure that the realms will know and experience peace at any cost. That includes tearing people to shreds if they pose any kind of threats to the realms he now protects. We get a glimpse of his fatality in the very first Mortal Kombat 1 trailer. And then people were actually able to experience the fatality when they got a chance to play Mortal Kombat 1 during Summer Games Fest. Anyway, let's have a look at this devastating fatality performed by the Fire God himself, shall we? This is, this is straight up brutal. He summons two dragons and has them restrain his opponents. And we can hear the agony that they're in before he uses their own head to tear their body in half. The thing that really impresses me most about this fatality is that it looks exactly like the one in the trailer. Like, I know it's the same fatality, but you know how games will polish certain things to make it look good for the trailer? Well, it doesn't look like that was entirely the case here. I mean, there is some polish in the trailer, yeah, but what we have in the real game looks just as good. The team really outdid themselves this time and it just gets me even more excited for the fatalities that we haven't seen just yet that's my list guys do you love it hate it do you guys have a list of fatalities that you like from the new Mortal Kombat game so far? If you do, let me know how your list would look. Also, whose fatalities are you looking forward to seeing the most? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been your friendly casual gamer, hoping that you stay as casual as I do, and I'll see you next time.